Hello, this is Tech Support Guy Show, number 51 for January 8th, 2012. Now with Handy Carrying Loop. Welcome to the Tech Support Guy Show. I'm Mike Cermak, known on the site as Tech Guy. With me today is Brian Hansen. Yo, but yo. <laughs> Jacob. Uh, oh, I can't remember Jake's last name. Oh, I failed. You're, you're fired. Oh, Jake's what? Yeah, I don't have a last name. I'm like uh, Oprah and, uh, you know, the Cher. The Jacob. <laughs> Mueller. <laughs> Mueller. Oh, darn it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jake. I failed on that. Sorry, right, man. And Dan something or another. <laughs> Hi, Dan McCarthy. Uh, thank Sit you. Up. Sit up. Please. It's not happening. <laughs> not happening. You know what's really funny like this? is whenever I put up a title bar underneath the uh, the thing, let me see if I can find one to throw up real quick, it like covers 90% of Dan. <laughs> and uh, so it he's not like going to... <laughs> You should get a graphic of like uh, one of those little teenage pink uh, t-shirts and put it underneath his head. <laughs> <laughs> one that says juicy or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Danny. All right. So we got a couple of shows. I mean, a couple of stories we want to get into. Thank you for being here, guys. Appreciate it, even if I don't remember your names. And um, we're going to get right into it. Uh, the first thing I wanted to mention is on Tech Support Guy, which, of course, is the site for this show, techguy.org. Uh, if you go there, there is a new feature for those who are members of Tech Support Guy. If you go into the forums and then into the site comments and suggestions area, there's a new link at the very top pardon me, called Ideas for New Features and Enhancements. Uh, within the next couple of months, we're going to be upgrading the software that runs Tech Support Guy. And it's a scary, scary thing. But in doing so, we're going to begin to add new features to the site again. Right now, the site is kind of in a frozen state as far as features go because I don't want to spend time creating new features for the site and then have to create them again in three months when we switch to the new software. So we're putting a hold on creating any new features right now, but we have a place for people to put uh, their suggestions in. And what's really cool is then you can vote on other people's suggestions. So if you go in there, there's a thumbs up and a thumbs down. And if you're logged in as a user, you can vote on those and put the most important ones at the top and the worst ideas at the bottom. Uh, so I encourage people to go in there and do that. We've actually had a lot of activity. It just started here about a week ago, and we already have a lot of good ideas and a lot of votes in there, and appreciate it. And it helps. I won't promise that everything that bubbles to the top will necessarily get implemented, because some of them are still bad ideas, even if a lot of people like them. But... <laughs> <laughs> but I am going to take them into serious consideration, and that will definitely help me to prioritize. So I encourage people to go in there and check that out. So that's the, this is the point where one of you tell me what a great idea that was. And, uh, and don't say bubbles. I didn't say bubbles. I said bubble to the top. Okay, good. As long <laughs> as we're clear. Why, why, why am I not supposed to say bubbles? Well, it's self-explanatory, man. Just don't say bubbles. What's wrong with bubbles? See, bubbles? I'm, I'm I'm thinking about that that uh, bar joke about bubbles. Exactly. Oh, see, I, maybe I don't know the the bar joke about bubbles. You don't. Is it is it family friendly? It is no. not. Oh, family then we're definitely friendly. not going to include that here in the uh, in the show. Um. So moving on beyond bubbles, everyone listening right now is Googling. Everyone listening probably already knows the joke. I will Google in the meantime here. Bubbles, bar <laughs> Um So we've got a couple of news stories coming up. Uh, Danny, what do you want to hit first on, on, our, on our news list? Let's talk about Raspberry Pi. I, I well, like well, Raspberry Pi. I like Blueberry Pi better. Some people like Apple Pi better. I know. Um, but back into the technology realm, CES is happening this week. Uh, I think a lot of events are actually kicking off tonight. Right. And speaking of CES, that was the, I, I thought someone was going to take that up. Uh, maybe what? two or three or four of us will be there next year in, in the 2013 version of CES in Las Vegas. Woo! We may even be able to do a live show. I think we should. I think we got to figure out a way to do that. For sure. It happen. Yeah. Okay. So CES is happening this week, and there are a lot of new technologies being introduced. Uh, Raspberry Pi is one of them. 
Uh, Vizio is debuting some new technology in the PC industry, and we have uh, the third of my topics, uh, One Laptop Per Child, or OLPC, is debuting a tablet. So we're going to get into each one of those now. Uh, I'm going to start with Raspberry Pi, unless you guys want to talk about something else. No, let's hit Raspberry Pi. I'm hungry. Man. All right. Raspberry Pi is uh, a project that was started in England by uh, an employee of Broadcom, separate uh, separate venture. But the hope is, like one laptop per child, if inexpensive computing can be made for um, delivery to children, that children will learn to program much like they did in the, um, I guess, 60s, 70s, and somewhat in the 80s, where they actually got hands-on into technology at a very young age, not waiting until a little bit older, you know, like college age, before cracking open a computer and learning how to program. The uh, the Raspberry Pi is a $25 or a $35 computer, depending on the model that you buy, completely capable of HDMI output. Uh, the Model A has 128 megabytes of RAM, where the Model B has 256 megabytes. We've talked about Raspberry Pi on the show before, but they're going into production this month. They did 10 beta boards uh, in December. Those 10 beta boards have since been auctioned off on eBay. Uh, one of them, I think, went for like 1,700 pounds. What? Yeah. What? Let's see. Why? Well, it all goes to charity so that they can produce more of these. I guess. Uh. Okay. So again, th th this um, Raspberry Pi is intended for school children, like one laptop per child. Um, so at CES this week is Eben, which I believe uh, he works for Broadcom. So he'll be he'll be at the Broadcom booth if you want to visit him and talk to him about Raspberry Pi. The one of the interesting things about Raspberry Pi is that you basically are getting the the computer without a case or anything else so that you can make it into whatever you want. It natively supports Linux, which I believe they had Ubuntu, and I'm trying to remember the other operating system they had installed on there. They had a uh, they had Quake 3 uh, running on it, if I remember ah. correctly. <laughs> well, you got to have Quake 3. Well, they did that just to demonstrate that you could run something uh, uh, relatively intense. Let's see if I can find that for you real quick. So I'm looking at the, the device here, and it's very, very small. I see what looks to be USB ports and an audio jack, and that's about all I see, a power jack. Maybe that's a Cat5 jack there. Yep, you, uh, so the Model B has Cat5. Um, the Model A ha is Wi-Fi only. And let's see here. If you go to the FAQ section of their website, you can actually get uh, kind of a diagram of what is available. It comes up. It's the first thing that you see. So you get your RCA video, audio jack, HDMI, uh, SD card, uh, micro USB power. So all of your interfaces are going to be via USB, basically. So if you want to hook up a keyboard or a mouse, you're going to have to uh, plug in most likely a USB hub because this thing takes very little power. Its power supply is real small. And your USB hub is going to have to have a wall wart. You're yep. not going to get power out of this thing. Exactly. Exactly. So this could actually be a, um, a media center with some peripherals. You can connect this to uh, um, an external USB drive for to store all of your media, and this could serve up your audio video. Hmm. So what's the price point supposed to be for these things? 25 for the Model A, which is 128 megs. $25? No, yes, $25. Oh, and, and, wow. And no uh, Ethernet on Model A. Model B has 256 megs of RAM, and has Ethernet as well. Huh, okay. So they've already started building add-on boards for these so that you can do various things, uh, various other things with them. I, I think that we're going to see some um, Arduino interfaces with it later on. They're, they're really just, uh, like, these guys are playing, and they're yeah. making a living playing. <laughs> That's the dream. Uh, 
if I can if I can draw a very simple analogy, is it is this kind of like you know the old days when our parents and our or the older generation got like chemistry sets and they would kind of make stuff up uh, or an easy bake oven kind of thing? Is this the easy bake oven of computer programming? You know what? I think that is very appropriate. Yes. Okay. Cool. I'm in. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think that's a good comparison. I'm in. I think too. I'm going to get cool. myself an easy bake oven as soon as they're available. <laughs> Uh, I really am. I, I'm. I'm going to probably get both a model A and B just so I can play with both of them. Uh-huh. I, I don't know what I'm actually going to do with either one of them. Right. Yeah, but, I don't know uh, either. But if you were making a product that needed a a, <laughs> a controller or something, twenty five bucks for all of that. That's right. And I suspect if you bought a thousand of them, they would give you a deal. I bet. Mm. I bet they would. I bet they would. I, again, the commercial market is not really what they're what they're. Right. Mm, I understand. Producing these for they're they're producing these for educational purposes, which is very lofty. I I like that. So what are these things come preassembled? What are they, they going to use it for in education that the computer sitting in front of the kid isn't already going to be able to do? Or are well, they think in like third world countries where they're not going to have? But how are you going to power the thing? I don't get it. So one, I think that they're they're trying to get cheap devices in so that it's more cost effective in a younger for a younger crowd to have something to work on. You don't necessarily want you, you don't necessarily want kids kernel hacking on your production desktops that are in your computer lab, right? If you're gonna if get it's in a virtual the pro- machine they can. Sure. Yeah, sure. Virtual machines so th- are cheaper than actual hardware. Sure. Uh, they're not cheaper than twenty five dollars though. Hmm. Possibly. Yeah, I guess I'm going with the assumption that there's already enough computers in the classrooms, and that's not necessarily an accurate it, assumption. Right, right. All right, I'll buy it. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Uh, I think I was more excited about it than the, the kind of blasé reception we're getting here. Yeah, I don't think anyone cares. All right, I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> well, I mean, ta- Dan, why did they decide that this was the right time to do it? I, like, like, what, I, what I think great this? What's frustrated, uh, the, even specifically, I believe, is that people coming out of high school and college now don't really know how to program, even if they've uh-huh. focused on that as, as, as their area of study. They don't yeah. know. Whereas the, the programmers that you had going into the industry in the 80s and even in the 90s, they were hackers, if you will. They, they, they started learning at a very young age. And started playing with the technology, and playing is the key there. They were playing with the technology to learn the technology, uh-huh. so that when when they when they got out into the workforce, they actually knew. It wasn't just that they had been force fed uh, a curriculum. They've played with, they've learned, they've hands on experience with with this. And right. the hope is that this will spark. It will be cost effective and spark interest in computing again. Right. In, yeah, in, like if you think you think about um, Matthew Broderick in in War Games, right? Like it right. was his computer. His parents never right. had any idea how to use that thing. The generation that's growing up today and coming out of college today, their parents have been around computers forever, and they're used to treating computers as these kind of sacred, expensive, don't touch it, you might break it type of things. And then so the kids can't learn. And plus, let's not forget they're all distracted by. Nintendo 64 and, and Microsoft Xbox 360s and all that crap that they have to enjoy and just be entertained. And they're less, uh, less inclined, I guess, to go and learn how to do some of that stuff their sel- their, themselves. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It, it's kind of cool. And I'm, I'm glad that they're making it a low cost, low risk entry. Yeah, that's like, true. Way to do it. It's remarkable that they can do it at that price point right from the beginning. You'd think they would have to ramp up to that. There was a lot of um, uh, question about whether or not they would actually be able to meet that price point when they first announced this. Well, but, uh, and to, they've had. Sorry, go ahead. They've had people join them. Like Broadcom is producing. Uh, what is it? It's not. Is it the processor on there? Looks like the processor. Arm yeah, two. Yeah, there you go. Arm Eleven. Yep, there you go. So Broadcom is producing the processor, and this is a char- charitable organization. To be clear, this is not a for-profit organization. Raspberry right. Pi Foundation is a charitable organization, so uh, everyone who participates in this and providing the cheap hardware and whatnot 
I'm sure it's a tax write-off oh, of some sort. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. And it will run on four AA ba- batteries. Wow. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I, I am impressed with this at all. I mean, the, the, the size of the device is, is tiny. 85 millimeters by 54 millimeters by 17 millimeters. And it weighs 45 grams, which I think in American is like 20 pounds. Yeah, definitely going to be 20 pounds. <laughs> it might even fill up this room. <laughs> well, most computers, you know, do fill or, up an entire room, right? What year is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be, it would be like, uh, uh, it's like eight tenths of an ounce is how much it would weigh. 40, 40, 40 whatever grams would be about eight tenths. Yeah. So they're they're shipping internationally. Um, they will have similar to the one laptop per child. They will basically have one where you can buy one for yourself and give one to someone else that, that needs one, a charitable organization, an educational organization somewhere else. That's kind of the way one laptop per child worked. Yes, that, that is exactly the way one laptop per child, except uh, one laptop, laptop per child missed their price point. Yes, they did. I was going to mention that earlier. That was going to be my nice, easy uh, 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 transition, but uh, they really did. Because originally one laptop per child was supposed to be 100 bucks, right? That's right. That's yeah, right. I remember that. So speaking of one laptop per child, Dan. Yeah. How so, do you like that? Uh, that was that was that. That was a good transition. <laughs> that was a great transition. <laughs> it's even better when I pointed out. <laughs> so uh, one laptop per child OLPC is going to see yes again with a new uh, product offering. It's called the XO three point and it is a tablet. And it is uh, the original specs on it. The the thickness it was about. Uh, half inch to an inch thick. I mean, it was pretty pretty wide, but same price point. They're looking at $100 on this one. Um, now, are they doing the same thing here where you buy one for someone else and get one yourself? Or? That is um, that that is my, my expectation, although the, the websites that I've read information on this have not said uh, specifically whether or not it will be Basically, you pay two hundred dollars and you get one yourself. Right now, we had this question in the chat room here um, about the Raspberry Pi. You mentioned that it works the same way. You buy one for someone else and get one yourself. Is that twenty five dollars or is that fifty dollars? What I have understood is that it is twenty five dollars for Model A for you. You want to buy one twenty five dollars plus whatever it costs to ship from the UK. And that helps to support giving one to a kid somewhere. No, that does not oh, okay. support anything. So Raspberry so, Pi isn't isn't like OLPC. I think we might have misspoke earlier. No, no. Well, no. They, they if you check out their FAQ, you'll see on there that they have. Are you going to have a buy one get one or buy one give one? Uh huh. And uh, they are going to have that. Oh, uh, they, they just don't yet. Right. We plan to implement a program of this sort, but you can also just buy one if you prefer. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Um. Sure. Sure. I don't know what, where I was going with the last. Oh, so the uh, the specs on this are it's going to be Marvell's Armada PXA618 SOC processor. That doesn't mean it's, anything to me. It doesn't mean crap to me either. Uh, it's going to have uh, <laughs> 500. <laughs> it's going to have 512 megs of RAM, and it's going to run Android. Or it, you, if you want, you can put Fedora on there. You can put Ubuntu on there. Um, can I put Palm OS on there? Uh, Web OS, yes, I bet you can let because Web OS yes. has been <laughs> open source. No, don't let it go. Keep it going. Keep <laughs> OS going. Now we just need one laptop per child to make a phone and let me put Web OS on it and I'll be happy again. Why would <laughs> one laptop per child build a phone? Well, they're making a tablet. Yes, but that that's that's a computing device that can so be is used a phone. A teaching aid. Huh. What, what does a tablet do that a phone doesn't? Come on. It's it's got a viewable display area. Oh. Phones do not have viewable display areas. Oh. So I, I'm going to post a link into the uh, the <laughs> chat here. I want you guys to check that out. This the screenshots of this are actually pretty slick. It looks nice. Uh, if it is rugged, so that it can be uh, used by children, much like my my daughter. Wow. Uh, now are who, these real pictures? Because it looks like uber thin. Yeah. That does look a lot thinner than the original pictures I've seen. Um, hold on just a second. Let me find the other quarter of uh, an inch thick. What? Yeah, that, that's pretty that thin. Wasn't How the... thick is an iPad though? That might not be. Uh, yeah, it's it's about a third of an inch thick, I think, from 
from the, all the way back at the bottom of the shell to the screen. Now, what is the stupid circle thing that's apparently designed to be broken off on the corner of the thing? <laughs> so, so you use it as a keychain. <laughs> no, honestly, so a keychain. <laughs> one, one, one of the cool things about um, the X01, which was their, their first laptop, you could actually crank it to get power. So I'm that. guessing that that has something to do with cranking the, the power. I'm not sure, but... That, that's a guess. Um, on the power s subject, in order to charge the battery, if you will, um, cranking the uh, cranking the the device to get the power for one minute is supposed to give you the equivalent of like ten minutes worth of juice on the device. Right. They're they're expecting it to have about an eight to ten hour battery life. Of course, that really depends on what kind of software you put on there and what you're doing with it. Sure. Right. Now, can you run Quake 3 on this? Because that's the real question. I mean, um, I don't honestly <laughs> know if you could if you could do that. I was you know what you could probably run on pretty much anything right now because uh, ID just recently released the source code for Quake 3. They're the last uh, bastion of uh, you know open source in, in gaming. Oh, uh, really? So uh, that's a little bit of a, a geek tidbit for you guys. So. I'm I'm reading the uh, the specs on it. The screen is going to be eight inches. They're not going to upgrade to the Pixel QI display for power savings. Oh, I'm sorry. They are going Future to. Future plans. Yeah. Yep. It will not run Windows. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Now, come on. If Windows 8 comes out and can run oh. on, well, I guess it is a special processor, isn't it? Yep. I guess it won't run on that. It has 512 megs of RAM. I was thinking, man, it can run just about anything, but... <laughs> uh, so this is cool. This is this is interesting. Um, especially if they can make it, you know, solar or hand-powered, just like the, the laptops were meant to be. Well, it, it is just... It is hand-powered right now, so they have future plans or attempts to make it solar-powered. And mm -hmm. I think that would be incredibly kick-ass you put a yeah. solar panel on the back of that and just turn it over and let it charge oh, that's kind of yeah. hot you know you it know would take forever to charge it but that's kind of a cool idea yeah i mean so while you're out working the fields or whatever you <laughs> you, you just you're, strap it to your back and right then, uh, your tablet is charging while you're working that well you even if fairies and you'll be fine even if that isn't the primary power even if you do need to charge it some other way at least that gives you something this is That's another cool. device that I'm really excited about, and I want to buy one for myself. If they make this solar power, <laughs> just think about it. Like, I'm going on vacation to the beach, and I don't want to take anything that I'm going to get sand in or oh, yeah. whatever. This is supposed to be playground tough. So I take this with me, turn it over while I'm, like, out swimming with the sharks, and my my, my then you get back and it's charging. gone. Someone's going to pick that up so fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, maybe I that's what the circle's for. That way you can, you know, put a padlock through it and lock it to your stuff. Oh, uh, that could be. <laughs> Clearly, you guys are not paying attention to the graphics in in the uh, link I, I sent you. The, the, it's a finger hold so that you don't drop it. I see that in the one picture, but I'm still pretty well convinced that it's really designed to be broken off. <laughs> uh, now, it looks like it's a, a lawnmower starting cord. That's <laughs> maybe that's it. Maybe this thing is gas powered. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, that that could be the crank. If you pull on that to crank a crank something inside to get the juice i don't know <laughs> in the chat room hobo says that it's to clip it to your bathing suit there you go it is waterproof after do all do not make fun of me because i want to take this to the beach <laughs> <laughs> because any geek who goes to the beach the most the biggest concern he has is how am i going to take my gadgets with me <laughs> it is now yeah. what is kind of cool on this thing though looking at the the pictures and again i'm not completely convinced these are actual pictures or whether they're mock-ups but um but the frame around it is ultra thin it's like the whole screen is the almost the entire size of the device you know what i'm saying like with yeah. an ipad i've got a, a frame around the thing especially on the one side where the camera is and the other side where the one button is this thing is like all screen yeah I think hot. it'll be interesting to see some of the photos that come from the uh, devices that are shown at CES. Yeah, definitely. I'd be interested that, to see how much they look like, these mock-ups. Well, let me try to find the other link I had. Uh, that was Montana Linux. 
That's muckware. Where is it? I'm just going to keep talking to myself like this. Here That'd we go. Great. I think you're right, Mike. I think these are mock-ups because when you look at the picture, you can see that the the fade from yeah. you know, the, the glare yeah, the is fake all glare. the same. Yeah, the glare does not look real at all. The whole yeah. thing doesn't look real. It's it's completely fake. I don't think they're even going to make any tablets. I think the whole <laughs> thing is a scam. They're just trying to get your 100 bucks, and they're going to claim that they send some, something overseas. And... All right, now check out the link that, that I <laughs> just sent you. I'm ignoring you. I'm kidding, um, by the way. I don't Don't sue me, please. Uh, the link you just posted, I think, is is the same link you had posted before. Oh, no, scroll down. Yeah. <laughs> and I so have to throw this into the show notes. If you look at the mock-ups there, uh, the device is considerably thicker. Yeah, it is. That's a lot more than a quarter inch or whatever we said. And it doesn't have that little thing you're going to break off. But it does have a freaking solar panel. Fix Fixating on. Yep. yep. Yeah. Huh, that's kind of hot. Some like it hot. Sorry. Just yeah, so that looks completely different. Yeah, that looks like it's actually probably close to what it would be. Because yeah. I, can, I can't imagine a device that is intended to give to school-aged children. And Maybe. again here, look at the frame around this thing. Yeah. Very different than what we were seeing in the other pictures. Much less sexy. I still Much more to- square. Yes, definitely. Well, y- you know, you can't have two rounded corners on a on a tablet because Apple will sue you. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, do not make it too too appealing because Apple has a patent on pe- appealing. Yeah, rounded corners are patentable. Yes, absolutely. From just a drawing alone, functional anyway. I'm gonna All stop. right, right on. I like the solar panel. That's interesting. I'd be interested yeah. to know how long it needs to sit in the sun. But I guess if you're in Africa or something, maybe it, uh, you know, the sunlight's a little stronger. Seriously, as compared to like Pennsylvania, sure. well, closer to the equator and right. things like no, that. No, I'm, yeah. I'm being completely serious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. ultraviolet rays and whatnot. Yeah, right. I, I, I'm excited about both this and uh, Raspberry Pi. I want to get both of these for my children and see if I can get them a little more interested in technology. That's pretty cool. And if I can't, then I just have more gadgets to play with. <laughs> that's the real. <laughs> that, that real. That's it. That's it. <laughs> it's a low, low cost, low risk way to get to try and get interest your child in, in technology. Sure. And, and, and they look like they're built to last. You know, you can throw it at yeah. a kid and, and it won't break. Yeah. See, honestly, looks- with devices like these, I, I wouldn't mind buying a few of these and giving them to like the boys and girls club. That's a good idea. You know, things like that to, to get other children who are less fortunate acquainted with technology. That's a cool idea. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, thanks Danny. Cause uh, honestly, without you bringing these to my attention, I certainly never would have heard of raspberry Pi. Um, and I've read about OLPC, but back when it was, they were just working on XL one and they were thought they were going to get down to a hundred bucks and they got nowhere near it. Uh, yeah. I didn't even know they were still actually trying to do anything. I thought they had been disbanded. I thought Nicholas had gone off and done other things. But uh, so no, cool. These are these are good stories. Good yeah, story. I, I think um, on the OLPC topic, I think uh, MIT is still involved with the OLP, OLPC effort. So oh. uh, they've got some definite backing, and I believe that on the Raspberry Pi topic, that even who is I guess independently wealthy himself uh, it was funding out of his own pocket the Raspberry Pi development. Uh, Pretty cool stuff. Wow, yeah, that is cool. Yeah, good, good to see. Uh, you know, a technology that, that kind of gives back, or right, or at least can be self sufficient with the solar powered and the hand cranking. The um, last I heard was when John Lennon was promoting back in two thousand eight. What? I'm reading Hobo's comments. I see that, but I don't understand it. I don't think I quite understand. I, I think he's trying to be funny. Oh. Or she. Are you trying to be funny, Hobo? Maybe John Lennon's song was used in some promotion for something like one of the OLPCs. Ah. Is that what he's saying? I don't remember. Imagine, maybe. Thing. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, could be. There, oh, there is a commercial. That's what he's saying. Is it, can, can is we, it for OLPC or what's it for? Bring, bring it up, Mike. See if you can pull it up on Hook YouTube. Hook us up with a link, Hobo. Um PC commercial. Yeah, I'll be darned. John Lennon one sh- one laptop per child commercial. Uh, nice. It'll be in the chat room here in now. And uh, 
I'll have to insert it into the uh, video in post because I can't get audio, but uh, but we'll quietly look at it and uh, pretend like we're actually hearing it right now because in post we will. You want me to sing? I can. I can. No. <laughs> no. If only I had my tuba here. <laughs> this is funny. I can't believe I haven't seen this. I wonder if it actually ran anywhere. I, I've never seen it. I gotta say, that's pretty gimmicky, though. It, it probably was in a, a, a TED presentation somewhere or, you know, some sort of sponsorship thing. Maybe. I don't remember seeing it, but maybe. I remember at TED, they uh, there was a, I was at TED one time when they talked about ALPC a bit, and they actually had them there for people to be able to buy, and then they would ship another one off. But um, I don't remember that, but who knows? I have a bad memory. All right. well, what were we talking about? I can't remember. I think we're about to talk <laughs> about real laptops. Oh, real laptops. Uh-huh. Okay. So instead of these gimmicky, you know, uh, everyone in the world ought to have a laptop, let's get to the real thing that actual people are going to use. Why do you hate freedom, Mike? <laughs> I'm a capitalist. <laughs> Why do you hate freedom? <laughs> so the story, I, unless you have something else you want to mention on this. No, no, no. Go ahead. All I'm right. done. I'll get into the real stuff now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so the the big story, speaking of capitalism and uh, and such, is and not trying to help the the greater good at all. Vizio is going to enter the PC market. So apparently they're done, well, not done, but they you know have made their name making cheap TVs for Walmart and uh, and they played with uh, what did they didn't they talk about making a phone at one point. I don't know if they ever they actually did it. They do make a tablet already. They have a, an Android tablet, a couple of Android tablets with a price point of around 250 to 350 400 something like that. So these, they're making some laptops and desktops, all-in-one desktops, and the uh, chief technology officer at Vizio says that they're going to go on sale by June at a, and I quote, a price that just doesn't seem possible. That's all we know about pricing right now. It's it's so. This is this is similar to e-machines attempt to get everyone else out of business. Um, so they're targeting they're, they're specifically targeting HP. They have to. HP is one of the only manufacturers left still making um, all in one desktops other than Apple. Apple seems to be the only one that, that's selling a lot of those, I think. Um, yeah. And that's probably arguable as well. But yeah. um, HP is is set to introduce a new all-in-one PC for twelve hundred bucks next week as well. Yeah, but if their so, all-in-one PC is twelve hundred bucks and Vizio's here is going to be a uh, impossible price, right? Exactly. Whatever that is, maybe it's infinity. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We're assuming that when he says an impossible price, that seemingly <laughs> imp maybe it's the square root of negative one. <laughs> <laughs> they will give you the square root of one dollar if you take it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't see this as a nail in the coffin to, to HP, although they they tend to do that th to themselves. <laughs> well, um, and I thought that HP was uh, starting to get out of the consumer market. I thought they were going to go all IBM on us. No, Meg Lip whatever has said that they are not getting out of the PC market. They are they're going to continue their PC manufacturing business. But so they need to get into the phone manufacturing business again. That's funny. They have said uh, they will not be doing that. I know. I heard. Well, they didn't say they're not going to do it. They said they're not doing it right now. That other manufacturers got to pick up WebOS first, and then. But they said that they might do it again in no, the future. No, that was tablets. That was not phones. Oh, it definitely was phones. Because I was, printed it up and I put it on my mirror so I can look at it every day. I'm calling shenanigans. <laughs> Since when am I not allowed to make things up? Hey, as uh, <laughs> as Jake used to say, pictures are it never happened. What is it? What's the phrase? Pictures or it never happened. Oh, oh. Hmm. What about video? <laughs> video where it never happened. Video is moving pictures, I guess. Hmm. All right, I'll try and find some evidence to support my my I, uh, unbelievable claims. I want to. I mean, my claims give that me, just don't seem possible. Give me evidence now. Come on. This is the interwebs. This is the age of technology. All right, I'll put you it go on to Google I'll, and you search and and it comes back and it give says, me a minute. I'll put it on Wikipedia. You're full of crap. Oh, you're gonna put it on Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> if it's on Wikipedia, it's true. Give me just a minute. All right, I'll see what I can find here. 
Uh, HP to make WebOS tablets again in 2013. Um, I don't want to claim that Dan's right. <laughs> HP hangs up the phone on... Yeah, there you go. That sounds like it's going to be open for... Uh, uh, All right, while you look that up, so Vizio's uh, planning on on releasing two desktops, two (laughs) all-in-one PCs, and three notebooks um, at CES. These these are, again, expected to go on sale in June. It'll be very interesting to hear the quotes on prices for each of these, along with specs. I'm interested to see what uh, processors they're using with... uh, with the notebook specifically. And, and honestly, durability. E-machines were notably crap. So yeah, I wonder if sure Vizio is going to be able to... to I hope not. At least better. the design looks cool. I mean, the E-machines were looked like crap too. But these Vizio yeah. things, at least they look cool. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're sleek in design. They better be careful because I see rounded corners and you, we all know how Apple does not like... Other people using rounded corners. I'm not going to stop harping on that. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. I think this is the fourth podcast in a row that I've mentioned it. (laughs) All right. I can't find evidence, but I will. I don't believe you will. I think I will. And I think... You know why? Why? Because you're full of crap. I'm going to get a soundboard for the next podcast so Uh I can just make obnoxious sounds every time I'm calling shenanigans. Or maybe like... you were doing that already. (laughs) <laughs> oh, oh! So, so that's how you're going to contribute. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to add some humor, man. Come on! <laughs> I swear guys, that I'm going home. I'm going to find it. Um. So I'm I'm reading about Vizio in, in general. Um. First of all, it's only been around since 2002. At which point. They only had three employees, and they, all they did was provide consulting services to Gateway. We all know how <laughs> well that must have gone. That's funny. Uh, that is funny. And oh. as of 2008, they only had 100 employees, but they sold 3.5 million high-definition televisions and were the number one fastest-growing consumer electronics company. And they be, were awarded the Walmart Supplier of the Year Award. Um, and now in 2010, they only have 196 employees, 76 of whom are in South Dakota, which means they all do customer service. And wow, they're, they're a giant, giant company now. They're only, yep. you know, nine years old at this point. They, they, they're attributing, uh, attributed to closing two, um, major players in television. Who were they? Samsung, uh, or at least I know they're they're working on getting rid of Samsung pretty soon. Um, Samsung, it was an uh, an Asian company. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I, I started looking into this because I was like, I, I associate Vizio with Walmart. Um, and I actually thought it was a Walmart exclusive brand, but apparently I was very wrong. Um. It, it is a, an independent um, OEM hmm. that doesn't really have anything to do with Walmart from an investing standpoint. I thought it did. I'll be darned. Yeah. Uh, they actually started selling at Costco first. Costco was their first customer. Hmm. So uh, their their CTO has said that they're not shooting for the low-end laptop market with their laptops. Um, so the price point is going to be above 500 Well, that, does, that seems believable. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's probably going to have a 3D screen in it. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. It's, it's you, you think it's you think it's going to have a 3D screen? Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. It said the new desktop PCs will have 24 or 27 inch screens on it, and one notebook will have a 15.6 inch screen, and two ultra thin versions will have a 15.6 and 14 inch screen. Huh. Can I just say I hate the uh, the Ultrabook label? Yeah, kind of dumb. It, it really is. 
It didn't say ultra book. It said ultra thin version. No, no. If you read the uh, Wall Street Journal uh, article, oh. yeah. they, I don't know Vizio how... isn't using the Ultrabook moniker, but its laptops are also thin and offer screens ranging from 14 to 15.6 inches. Yeah. That's ultra thin. I don't know. I yeah. got nothing. Uh, I, uh... Interesting, stuff. Interesting stuff. All right. Well, so next week, uh, we should see the, the fruits of this discussion come out live. Um, you know, so, I remember I was at CES a couple years ago when uh, when yeah, Palm announced WebOS. Yes, I, I <laughs> fail. Um, so I'm so, just saying, maybe at CES again this year, the HP will announce the, that maybe maybe WebOS. someday they'll maybe, uh, maybe Mike. We love you, man, but go. this is bordering on senile. <laughs> <laughs> like you're refusing to accept reality. I, I remember back in my day. You're creating your own reality. Like Jake says, pictures or it didn't happen. Uh, oh, hey, if you guys go to uh, Engadget, going back on a previous article, there are some more uh, photos of that the prototype or whatever of that OLPC laptop. The and OLPC that little, that, you mean uh, uh, not laptop? The tablet. Uh, tablet, sorry, XO. yeah, tablet. XO3. And that little thing, that little green thing, apparently folds down. It's a carrying mechanism. Link. Not. That's what it looks like. Link. Link. Oh, geez. I forgot. You <laughs> and, don't and know speaking how. Of which, you do not how, know how to use. Uh, I'm looking. Yeah, I, I went to Engadget and I, I Googled OLPC tablet and I've got um, it doesn't uh, 34,000 results. So, uh, by the way, for those listening, um, links so that you don't have to Google through 34,000 results uh, will be put in the show notes. Uh, (laughs) If you go to techguy.tv, we post all of our shows there, video, audio, and show notes with links to everything we discuss. So you can go there, check it out, and, uh, and discuss the show there. All right, now if you go to the link that I did post so that you wouldn't have to use the Google machine yourself. Right, I appreciate that. So these are, user. again, the fake mock-ups that are not real, hence why they're uh, fake. Yes, yes, <laughs> fake mock-ups that are not real. Got it. Yes, but the, the I, what image is it? 9 of 14. Check that out. So it shows it in action. I think that's an action shot, definitely. And look at their shadows. How could that be fake? <laughs> <laughs> well, pictures or it's not real. We've got pictures here. So obviously it's real. <laughs> right, Jake? I mean, there's no denying that this is it's a picture. True. It's obviously true. When you look at uh, 2 of 14, the guy's holding his laptop, dangling by one finger. <laughs> That's always how I carry my laptop. If it's more than one finger, then I'm using too much effort, and there's not enough risk involved. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way Dan always carries things on the beach with one yeah. finger like that. You, you leave me alone at the beach. And then he smiles at all the other guys there. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, all right. I don't know. This is kind of, Again, these are the mock-ups of what they're not developing. We've we've seen the pictures of what I think is the real thing. And this Listen, is not just it. because HP stopped doing the web <laughs> OS doesn't mean you have to call shenanigans on OLPC. Shenanigans. Now, I want you to look at the last three pictures in this gallery. <laughs> Well, look at them each very carefully. I know it's going to take some studying to realize the... Uh... <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. I do not. We look, have listen. pictures, so obviously That's it's real. Clearly happened. <laughs> they clearly did not just change the image on the... <laughs> Someone knows how to hit, hold their hands very still. <laughs> All right, now click the next page. All right, now put no, your hands I'm back in. in the exact yeah, same position. I'm, on, I'm stepping in. I'm refereeing. But put your lightsabers away. Let's let's wrap this thing up. <laughs> you got to take a side first, Brian. Uh, Mike's side. That's always the correct side. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. We're going to close this up then. Um, so uh, tell us what you think. Uh, do you think that this is completely ridiculous? And obviously they're going to go with the pictures of the big ugly square thing that doesn't have the weird circle on it. Or do you think they're going to go with this magical thin device with the weird circle on it that has never going to be developed? 
You, are you asking me? No, I, I'm. I'm uh, obviously we know you think the Magic Circle is going to be coming out, but <laughs> oh, kumbaya! <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks a lot for being here. I appreciate it. Our next show is going to be Sunday, February 12th at 1 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you go to techguy.tv at that time. You can watch live, join into the chat room and such. Uh, Again, that's going to be Sunday, February 12th at 1 p.m. Eastern. And go to techguy.tv also to see previous episodes, show notes, all that other good stuff. And thanks a lot for being here. And I need to give you guys each a shout out too. I've been forgetting to do that lately. Uh, and I know Brian has something to actually shout out. So we're going to hit a couple of these here. First, I'm going to hit Jake. I don't know if Jake has anything to try and push us on or not. You're a little blurry, Jake. I don't know why that suddenly happened. It must have known I was going to switch to you. But really? um, anyhow, so you, you you don't have a blog or anything like that you want to push on people, do you? No, not yet. I may have something uh, next time to Good work on that. Maybe if you could come up with like a website of uh, of a place where you could buy these fake tablets, and uh, we could get Dan to go there and make fake orders. That'd you're fired, good. Mike. That'd, I that'd just want to go. You're, you're fired. <laughs> How about Dan? Have you worked on any websites lately? Oh uh, no, 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 I haven't. <laughs> no, I haven't. I've I've thought about it a lot. Well, that counts. That's that's almost as real as this tablet. It. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> that's it i'm not going to be here february 2nd <laughs> that's all right it's february 12th <laughs> oh well there, there we go <laughs> all right well I <laughs> <laughs> brian uh, since no one else has any any anything to push uh have you got any new projects going on that you'd like to mention uh, i do actually uh just launched a youtube channel called shower sandwich <laughs> what yes, is i know that by the way yeah uh, just do I visual. want to know what that means or visualize it? I, I didn't know if that was one of those things like the the bar joke that I wasn't familiar with since I'm so young and uh, innocent. No, no. <laughs> I not. assumed that shower sandwich meant something dirty. It's one of the only asexual uh, mentions I will ever make in most of my comedy. <laughs> uh, but I just think it's a great visual. Uh, Is that where and, you usually eat your sandwiches? Um. Uh. uh no comment. <laughs> But yes, you can find uh, find my comedy musings, uh, which uh, some honest feedback has said, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, other feedback has said, yeah, this one episode was stupid. Uh, but hey, I'm, I'm learning as I go, and we'll figure it out. But uh, yeah, so YouTube.com, uh, Shower Sandwich, BrianMHanson.com, which will just link you right back to YouTube Shower Sandwich. Uh, and we should mention, me on- I'm sorry, good. Twitter at uh, at Brian M. Hansen. Right. I was just going to mention that the videos for those listening may not exactly be work safe. Yeah, not safe for work. NSFW. Right. Yep. Definitely not. All right. Right on. Check it out, guys. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, again, and we'll see you in a month. <laughs>